Hello, this video is all about MYP design and Criterion A, specifically Strand 1. And it's uh, the video is geared for students. If you're not sure about what to do for Strand 1, uh, follow these pointers and you should be able to get a score of 8 out of 8. So to break it up into three pieces, you need to explain what the problem is. You need to identify some of the key stakeholders and then you need to persuade the reader that this problem really does need to be solved. So for Criterion A strand 1, uh, I'll be looking for about a half a page to a full page. And basically, you've just got to outline what the problem is. So first of all, just be clear that you could identify the problem. Explain so that anyone who picks up your report, they could read a paragraph that just uh, identifies what the specific problem is, or what the challenge is, or what the, what the concern is. Uh, but then for top marks you need to explain it so add more and more sentences so you can actually have a paragraph that just makes sense about what the problem actually is um, so the next section i would then be uh, conducting some research so criterion a actually has a heavy emphasis on research in uh, design uh, so for this for strand one you could conduct some primary research so that means easiest thing to do would be to identify somebody who's involved or experiencing that problem or that concern. And you can ask them a couple of questions. So you can do that through a video interview or a, a audio recording, or you could even just write a couple of questions and send it to them and have the, the, that person respond as well. You can do this via an email. Now, whatever you capture in that primary research, stick it into your document called Criterion A, Strand 1, and that's evidence that you conducted some primary research. Now, to put some icing on the cake, I would also write a little summary paragraph as well about what you found, what are the key findings after you conducted that uh, primary research. You can also do some secondary research, so that means looking at some websites, some journals, watching some videos, and just record some key points about the problem. Remember, the emphasis is on explaining what the problem is. So if you conduct any secondary research, be sure to include some citations as well. This explains to the reader that you did indeed do some, uh, did do some research. So you've just explained the problem. Uh, so the next section is to identify the key stakeholders. Now, according to the assessment criteria, you need to identify the client slash target audience. So what I would recommend is, first of all, think about the problem or the concern and identify all the different key stakeholders that this actual issue or concern affects. Once you've mapped that out, you can actually do like a visual representation of, and I'll show you some examples in a moment. You can then focus in on one or two of these stakeholders and you, the ones that you're focusing in on are the client and or the target audience or the end user. Whatever it is you're making, whatever kind of a product you're making, who is the end user? Now, I'll just give you some examples. So first of all, you could just list these kind of things or just write out some bullet points about the stakeholders, the client, and the target audience. But if you want to do some visual representation, I'll give you a couple of examples. So here's an example of um, a, 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 a stakeholder. So right in the middle of it, you'd put the problem or the concern, and then you just branch out in, in the form of a concept map or a mind map, all the different people that this uh, problem, or groups of people, that this problem actually affects. That, so that's like a mind map. There's another method here which is called like the onion, a stakeholder onion diagram. So because certain problems may affect people more than others, so you can actually represent that by the different layers of the onion. So once you've done the stakeholder map, and that should only take a short time, you can do that in 10 or 15 minutes, you then want to focus in on, if you're making something for a group or an organisation, time to do a little bit of research. So if you're doing it for a company or a group or a club, you need to pay, do a little bit of research, and this can be primary or secondary, and then map out some key information. And this could be presented by something like this, an executive summary, which has been borrowed from the business context. Uh, design thinking in business. This is another way you could outline. So you're just basically outlining some key information about the the group that, that's involved in and that you're making this product for. Um, here's another thing. So this involves a bit of research, maybe a little bit of history about the, the, the group and the organization. Now, once you've identified, maybe you're identifying one specific person that you're making a solution for, you could present that per, that that 
that information in something like a profile. Now this is very popular in a sporting context where they give some key information about the specific person. So you can do some primary research and collect some of this kind of data. Uh, another concept that you can use and that is a persona. So the last two slides here are personas, examples of personas. Now how that works, if you're, if you're focusing on a target audience, you've got your target audience and if you outline that, that's fantastic. But if you want to take that to one step further, you could then create a persona. Now, the persona is like the embodiment of the target audience, but giving it a face and a name and a personality. So you can create something like a persona. So when you're creating a product, rather than creating it for a big target audience, you're creating it for this persona. So that's the second part. First part, outline the problem with a bit of research as well. Next part, you need to identify those key stakeholders and then hone in on one client or an end user or a, uh, or a what is it, client or target audience. So that's how you do the second part. Okay, so just to reiterate, you draw the stakeholders and client. You don't need to do all of the things I just listed, just pick one or two, um, but you're looking for about a half a page to a full page where you clearly identify the, the target audience and or the uh, client as well. Now you can do that through a visual representation or through words or a combination of both. Now the last part is really important if you want to get a score of eight out of eight. And the last part involves you to explain and justify the need to solve the problem. So you've explained the problem, you've, you've identified the key stakeholders. Now you need to convince me, the reader or if I'm reading it or whoever's reading it, that this problem is serious, it's a big issue and it must be solved. Um, so how to do that? Um, so emphasize how you need to really kind of exaggerate, exaggerate or emphasize that this problem is a big problem. Now you can do this by explaining, okay, if this problem continues, th really bad things are gonna happen. You can also talk about if we don't intervene now, these disasters will happen. So you kind of present it as quite an urgent thing, urgent matter that really needs to be addressed. Uh, but you also you just kind of basically convince somebody that this problem, whatever the problem is, is really serious and it needs to be addressed. Now, some of the key words, some students have uh, a little bit of trouble understanding the explain and justify. So I'd like to throw in two other terms to help you uh, to help you understand what's right here. Basically, imagine the reader is not sure that they, this problem really needs to be solved. So in this last section of strand one, you need to convince the reader. So that word convince, if you're not sure what that means, look that one up. Or the other one is persuade. You need to persuade the reader that this problem indeed needs to be addressed. Now, you can, um, if you do a quick Google search on how to persuade somebody, you can get a few ideas. So this is where persuasive writing comes in. Uh, but you need to back it up with a bit of research as well. Um, I've given a few suggestions about how to convince somebody, how to persuade somebody, how to explain and justify the need to solve the problem. Some of the key things that I've talked, if you can back up your, uh, your, your, your sec this section of, with a bit of research, it adds weight to your argument. The other way you can do it is actually with a bit of a personal approach as well. So if there's some kind of an issue that you really feel passionate about, when somebody reads something, how it, 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 hurt, it really is something important to you, that's a good way to persuade a reader as well. So the other thing is, uh, to get top marks, you need to really expand on this section. So this is probably where you want to put most of your time and effort if you want to get a score of eight. So if you identify some key reasons, don't stop there. You need to add the word because, and furthermore, and moreover. And this kind of expands your section, this last section, and convinces the reader that this is actually really important. So just to conclude, this last section, again, you're looking for about a half a page to a full page. There should be some evidence of research. There should be evidence that you've done some critical thinking, and there needs to be some persuasive writing as well. So just to reiterate, from the top to the bottom, you need to explain the problem, you need to identify the key stakeholders and who it's affecting, and then you need to convince me or the reader that this problem is indeed a big problem, and it really does need to be solved. Just remember, at this point in time, you're not actually solving the problem, but you're just convincing the reader that it does need to be solved. Uh, just to focus in on the assessment criteria, for strand one, um, starting at the top, so I've just talked you through how to get a seven or eight, 
Uh, but the, the difference between a one and a two and a three and a four and a five and a six and a seven and an eight, the difference is basically about the command term. So if you just state some things, you're only going to get a score of one or two. But if you can outline things, expand on the information, you'll get a score of three or four. Uh, if you can explain things, you'll get a five or a six. But if you can explain and justify, that's when you get your scores of seven or eights. So your teachers will, should be guiding you through sta stating, stating some things as the starting point. So state the, state the problem, state the key stakeholders, and then you can expand on it and outline. And then you can explain it and outline. And then you need to explain and justify, and then you're gonna get yourself some top marks.